there has in South King County been an increase in violent crime. Right. And, you know, I, I like to say that the era of defunding the police is over. Yeah. And not that we ever did do that, right. but that our focus now really is on better policing. And we've done some progressive, exciting things here in King County. Dave Updegrove has worked as a public servant in Washington for more than 20 years. He served five terms in the state legislature before being elected to the county council in 2013. He represents District 5 in South King County, the same area where he grew up and now lives with his husband, Chad. Dave champions affordable housing and is a voice for marginalized communities. This year, he was elected chair of the King County Council. Hi again, everyone, Tony Ventrella. Welcome back to Community Conversations. And this is fun for me. We've got Dave up the Grove today, the new chair of the King County Council. Dave, you may not remember this, but I interviewed you when you were a state rep a long time ago. I do remember that. Okay, remember how good the questions were? They were incredible. Yeah, yeah, because I don't remember anything about it. But anyway, it was, it was a good time though. Here's one thing that I want to ask you, because I know that as chair, you're, you were just pumped and ready to go. You've got a few issues that you want to jump on. What's your goal as chair? Let's start that way. How does that change what you do on council to begin with? I think I've historically been known as a passionate champion for my district, the community I represent in South King County. Yeah. But as chair of the council, I wear a different hat. My job now is to help us as a body resolve issues and get to a conclusion that reflects the will of the body. Sure. And uh, I've tried to set the tone as chair and I have a pretty simple request of my colleagues and the staff here in the legislative branch. And that is we treat each other with respect and we treat the public with respect. And if that's our guiding principle, we can't go wrong. I also see democracy in general kind of under attack around the world yeah. and even in the US sometimes. And I think local governments like King County have an opportunity to set the example and show that democracy can work, yeah. that we can disagree without being disagreeable, that we can listen to the public, that we can have free and fair elections and respect our independent courts. And so I think we have an opportunity as the King County Council to regardless of people's political views, yep. show that democracy can work. Well, I think we've gotten to a point. So, I mean, you're setting a tone for yeah. really not only the public, but for other people in public office. Let's talk public safety. It's an issue, it's in the news every night. People are going, what's going on around us here? It is probably the number one issue I hear from people in the community about. Um, of all political stripes, people want to not only be safe, but feel safe, whether it's in their home or at work, and there's a perception that uh, crime is increasing. Some of that's perception and visibility, but there yep. has in South King County been an increase in violent crime. Yes. And, you know, I, I like to say that the era of defunding the police is over. Yeah. And not that we ever did do that, right. but that our focus now really is on better policing. And we've done some progressive, exciting things here in King County. We have. Um, strengthened our Office of Law Enforcement Oversight that oversees the sheriff with more staff and giving them new authority to make sure that our sheriff's department is performing in an equitable and fair way. We're investing in partnerships so mental health professionals oh, yeah. can either go out with the officers or instead of the officers to some call. Um, but we're really having trouble hiring officers. We have a lot of vacancies and a lot of cities do right now. And, and we do uh, support the King County Sheriff's Office. We want to support public safety. We want to do it in a more compassionate way. And so um, there's a lot of work still to do, but I think that's probably the most significant issue I hear from. The other thing very quickly that we do is we address the root causes. And right. you know, that's one of the best things you can do is work on the prevention side. And we in King County have one of the largest investments in youth through the best starts for kids tax levy. So probably more than any regional government in the country, we're focusing on addressing those root causes of crime. But that unfortunately doesn't take away the need for police, courts, and jails. We need both. Yeah, no, there's no doubt. It, it is, uh, you need a two or three uh, uh, side of the tack on this thing to, yeah. get it, uh, to get it done. And the funding to, to make all that possible as well. The other frustration, I'm sure, for so many people out there who are 
uh, living uh, who are homeless right now and the people that see all, all that's going on is how do we do this we've been working on this for years why can't we get the solution to homeless well if it was that easy it would be over Absolutely. but how are you doing what's the goal and yeah. what how about the progress that you're making it, um, I think we have a moral responsibility to get people out of parks and off the sidewalks and into housing with support and I like to picture uh, there's a scenario that describes some of the problem Picture someone, a homeless individual, passed out in front of the Burien Library. Not hard to picture. Yeah. And two people walk by. The first one, call her Susan. Susan looks down at that person and says, that's someone's son, maybe someone's father. Yeah. She feels deep compassion. We're one of the wealthiest regions in the, in the world. Why can't we get this person in to help? Someone needs to do something. A second person walks by, call him John. John looks down and says, that person smells bad. I've got my kids with me. Yeah. I'm worried he's got needles on him. It's degrading the quality of life. This is wrong. Somebody needs to do something. John will call Susan a liberal socialist enabler. Yeah. Susan <laughs> will call John a self-centered, bigoted yeah. jerk. Yeah. And then they argue about that in the public square. And what we miss is both of those, Susan and John, want to help get that person up and into yeah. housing. And so I think if we focus not on people's motivations and focus on what works, we can make some progress. And King County did something very innovative. We are purchasing um, hotels yeah. around the county in cities that are willing um, at low cost because in COVID, you know, a lot of these motels are going out of business sure. and it was a chance to help those business owners acquire property at an affordable cost. And we think we can get nearly 2,000 individuals off the street and into housing. And we're going to put security and mental health and, be, and addiction services on site to support those individuals. And it's a, we're in the process of deploying that strategy now. And we think it's going to be meaningful. It's big, it's bold, and it shows that we can actually get big things done. Yeah. The second thing we need to do is address, again, the root causes. Right. We know that for many people, not all, but for many they, uh, people who are chronically homeless have either addiction disorders yep. or mental health issues or both. And we're proposing a, that the voters, uh, we're going to put on the ballot a proposal for the voters to consider a small increase in property taxes in order to fund six crisis care centers around the county. They're designed after a proposal that the state of Arizona does. 24-7 walk-in for mental health, behavioral yeah. health, Police officers have somewhere to take people. They pick someone up off the street. Right now, it's jail or the emergency room. Right. And right. we're going to have uh, uh, opportunities for people to stay there for an extended period of time. It's going to change the way we deal with mental health and, and addiction in this region. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so we're trying big, bold things. Well, that, that to me is one of the most exciting things I've heard in a long time because yeah. I think there's a fear factor. I know there's a fear oh, factor. Yeah. When you're driving your car, you got your kids with you. You see someone homeless on the street. You know you want to help. Most individuals have enough compassion yep. to if they could snap their fingers and change that person's life, they would do it. Well, it doesn't happen like that. Yep. But to pull over and actually say, do you need my help? There's a little fear factor there. Yep. So if there was a place that these folks mm -hmm. could go yep. with help, maybe you call 911, the officer yep. comes to pick them up and take them somewhere you've at least done your part yep. it's a little bit but it's yep. something so and I like to remember too as I as you encounter these people it's they're sort of there but for the grace of God go I yeah anyone can find themselves in that situation Absolutely. Uh, you know the science more and more shows that addiction is a essentially a mental health issue it's a brain disorder yeah it's not a weakness of character and yeah. you have people who are in great pain who are estranged from their families living in the street because of mental health and addiction I don't think there's a single person I know whose family hasn't been touched by one of those two issues, by addiction or mental health. And um, it takes just the loss of a job or uh, the loss of your apartment and anyone can find themselves in that situation. So I know we, you know, we shouldn't be afraid, but I understand people have very conflicted feelings. Sure. That I, I told the story of Susan and John. I think there's a little bit of Susan and John in all of us. Oh, true. And, yeah, exactly. and, and, yeah. We need to focus on what works. I think the county's trying to, good. trying to do that. Well, that's good news. So I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, something else just came to mind, uh, Dave. My granddaughters play uh, youth basketball uh, down in uh, Pierce County. My son is their coach. 
and they do well. And the other uh, last season, I was at a game, and a parent came walking off from the sidelines. And this is when we were all masked. We had to wear yep. masks at the games. And the, first of all, I ripped his mask off and started yelling at his own daughter for making a mistake. And I thought, I really want to go across the gym and smack the guy. But of course, I didn't. Yep. Thank I thought, you. And then I'm yelling at the officials and all this. Now, did, 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 do I hear this right? Did, were you a basketball official at one point? Yes, and I hope How? to get back to it. Uh, I've worked off and on professionally um, as a basketball referee for high school, youth, and adult basketball leagues. And in fact, I've discovered there are many similarities between my job as a referee and my job as a council member. You know, in both cases, only you know in your heart whether you're being fair and doing the best job you can. Sure. In both cases, there's people literally yelling at you while you're trying to do your job. And in both cases, when the game's over, you slink off the court, disappear, and everyone's mad at you. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. And so I don't know if I'm a glutton for punishment, but you raise an interesting issue there. The, I, I've been really concerned with the increase in violence against sports officials. Yeah. A lot of little leagues and schools are having trouble getting officials to referee their games to the point that it's impacting athletics and um, parents need to support good sportsmanship. And there's a bill in Olympia this year that would actually increase the penalties for assaulting a sports referee. Good. You know, ner there's certain people have like nurses, it's a little bit of a higher penalty, a higher bar. Sure. Um, this bill yeah. suggests that there's, uh, we need a little bit of special protection for folks willing to put on the stripes and get on the court and, and, and take that grief. I was talking with the uh, Tacoma Athletic Association. I did a talk there a couple of weeks ago. One of their biggest issues is trying to find young people, older people, to referee to sure. any kind of, we're talking from Little League all the way to high school football uh, because the, they can't find yeah. officials anymore. And the pay for some of this stuff, yeah. especially for a kid trying to make a buck at 16, yeah. Yeah. 17, 18, is pretty darn good. Yeah, I was about to so, say that. If there's anyone watching this, it's a really, really fun. And you get paid decent. You can go yeah. work maybe four, four rec games that are 50 minutes each on a Saturday morning and come home with 150 bucks. And yeah. work yeah. A, you work a varsity game on a Friday night. You're making a couple hundred bucks for the game. And, you know, you can make this as a fun second job and bring in some good spending money and you get exercise yeah. and you get to be around the game. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, you just have to put up with some, some grief from coaches and parents. Well, or, or and, and, unless I'm at the game, in which case yeah. I'll come over and thank you. Yes. When it's over, say hi, nice job. Yeah, my team lost, it wasn't your fault. Yeah. Dave up the Grove, thank you so much. No, it's good a pleasure. Good luck good as to see you. chair and uh, to get all, <laughs> let's work on all this stuff. Let's talk again in a couple months. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Tony. Thank you for being with us on Community Conversations. I'm Tony Ventrella. We'll see you soon.